Hi friends, how's everybody doing? Hi Aria, hi Zachary, hi Colin. I was just talking to your grandma, Barbara. I hope you get to see this next story. Just tune in to, um, to YouTube and, and Mimi will have stories for you to watch every day. I'm so glad you're here in Maryland with us. Hi Sam and Henry, hi Samantha and Denny. Hey, Zayra and Oliver. I know you're getting ready for a trip tonight. I'm gonna miss you. Hi, hi, Iris. Hey, Hannah and Noah. Hi, Kayla. How are the little ones? Hi, Matea, Madeline. Well, let's continue in our story, The Wizard of Oz. We're going on to the next chapter. Off to see the wizard. In chapter three, Dorothy got to join two others on her journey. She got to join the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion. And here they are now. I wonder what's gonna happen today. Let's find out. Let's find out what Dorothy and the others are gonna do today. Okay. As they gazed longingly across the river each morning, they found it very hard to be patient for the country on the other side looked so lovely. They felt sure they must be nearing the Emerald City. And you know what Emerald looks like? So I brought, I brought a little green box to show you. That's sim a similar color to Emerald. It's very, very bright green. Finally, the raft was completed. So Mimi put together some little pieces of wood and see if you can, maybe you can make a, ma a raft out of some uh, popsicle sticks. They all got in very carefully and shoved off, but the water was almost too deep for the long pole to touch the bottom. This is bad, said the Tin Woodman, for if we cannot get to land, we shall be carried into the country of the Wicked Witch of the West, and she will make us her slaves. We must certainly avoid that if we can, said the scarecrow. He pushed so hard on his pole that it stuck fast in the water. And here, here is the scarecrow. He pushed on the pole. Oh my goodness, he's stuck. He's stuck in the mud. And before he could pull it out again, what happened? The raft was swept away and the poor scarecrow was left clinging to the pole. Oh no, Zayra, what's gonna happen to the scarecrow? He's up on a pole. Oh my goodness, down the stream the raft floated and the poor scarecrow was left behind. Then the lion said, something must be done to save us. I think I can swim to shore and pull the raft after me if you will only hold fast to the tip of my tail. So the lion began to swim with all his might toward the shore. It was hard work, but by and by they were brought safely to land. What shall we do now? asked the tin woodman. And here's our woodman, he's made out of tin. Remember him? As the lion laid down on the grass to dry off, So the lion was laying down. The best plan would be to walk along the riverbank until we come to the road again, remarked the lion. So when they were rested, they started along the grassy bank back to the road from which the river had carried them. It was indeed a lovely country with plenty of flowers and fruit trees and sunshine to cheer them. And they had not felt so sorry for the poor scarecrow, had they not, they could have been very happy. Presently, they saw him perched upon his pole. Here he is. In the middle of the water, looking very lonely and sad. What can we do to save him, asked Dorothy. But nobody had an idea. Until suddenly, a big stork alighted at the water's edge. Do you think he'll have an idea? What do you think his idea will be? Hmm. I'll wait, whisper to someone next to you. Okay, he is a bird, so he can fly. Let's see, let's see if you're right. Where are you all going, asked the stork. 
We are bound for the Emerald City, said Dorothy, but we have lost our friend, the Scarecrow, who is stuck on a pole in the middle of the water. Huh. If he wasn't so heavy, I'd get him for you, remarked the stork. He isn't heavy a bit, said Dorothy, for he is stuffed with straw. Is straw heavy? No, let me show you my straw. He is stuffed with straw. Straw's not heavy. Well, I'll try, said the stork. So the big bird flew over the water till she came to where the scarecrow was perched. What does that mean, perched? Right, that's where he, he was stuck. That's where he was staying. Then with her great claws, she grabbed him by the arm and carried him back to the bank where Dorothy and the lion and the tin woodman and Toto were sitting. Everybody was very happy to be together again and thank the stork heartily. Wasn't that nice that the stork helped? Let's see what's going to happen now. So once more, the little band, that means a little group, the little band walked along listening to the singing of the bright colored birds and admiring the lovely flowers. The road was smooth and well paved now. And the country about was beautiful, so the travelers rejoiced in leaving the forest far behind. They could see the fences. They could see the fences beside the road. They were all painted green, as were the houses. Sometimes people dressed as lovely emerald green clothes and wearing lovely green clothes and wearing peaked hats like those of the munchkins came to the doors and stared at them. So different little people came out. They kind of looked like little munchkins. And they stared at them. Were they surprised to see this band of people going by? Where are you going? To the Emerald City, said Dorothy, to see the great Oz. Oh, indeed, exclaimed the man. Are you sure that the Oz will see you? Why not, she replied. Why, it is said that he never lets anyone come into his presence. Does he never go out, asked the Scarecrow? Never. He sits day after day in the great throne room of his palace, and even those who will wait upon him do not see him face to face. What is he like, asked the girl. That is hard to tell, said the man thoughtfully. You see, Oz is a great wizard and can take any form he wishes. But who the real Oz is, no living person can say. Isn't that strange? No one has actually seen him? That is very strange, said Dorothy. But we must try in some way to see him, or we shall have made our journey for nothing. How so? Dorothy explained the favors that they hoped to have granted. Dorothy said, that the wishes that they had. She told the man, well, Oz can do anything, he said at last, so I suppose he will find Kansas for you. Dorothy looked quite disturbed at this, and to cheer her up, the farm wife offered the travelers a good meal and shelter for the night. So Dorothy told him about her wish to, to be sent home, but he, he was a bit uncertain about Dorothy's wish. He didn't know if he could do that but he said maybe he can. The next morning they started on their way and they soon saw a beautiful green glow in the sky just above them. So the whole sky looked the color green. That must be the Emerald City, they all cried excitedly. But it was afternoon before they came to a huge gate in a great green wall surrounding the city. Dorothy rang a bell and heard a silvery tinkle within. The big gate swung slowly open and they all pa passed through and found themselves in a high arched room, the walls of which glistened with countless emeralds. Before them stood a little man about the same size as the munchkins. He was clothed all in green and at his side was a large green box. What do you wish in the Emerald City, he challenged them. We came to see the Great Oz, said Dorothy. Do you think they're going to get to see him? 
Let's find out. The man was so surprised at this answer that he sat down to think it over. Hmm, it has been many years since anyone has demanded to see Oz, he said, shaking his head in perplexity. He is powerful and terrible, and if you come on an idle or foolish errand, he might be angry. But it is not a foolish errand, nor an idle one, replied the scarecrow. We have been told the Oz is a good wizard. So he is, said the green man, but few have ever dared to ask to see his face. I am the guardian of the gates, and it is I who must take you to his palace. But first you must put on spectacles. Why, asked Dorothy, because if you do not wear them, the brightness and glory of the Emerald City would blind you. Even those who live in the city must wear spectacles night and day. They are all locked on, and I have the only key that will unfasten them. He opened the big box, and Dorothy saw that it was filled with spectacles of every size and shape. And all of them had green lenses in them. The guardian of the gates fitted a pair to each member of the party, even to little Toto the dog and locked them on with a key which hung on a chain around his neck. Then he put on his own glasses, that's another word for spectacles, glasses, and told them he was ready to show them to the palace. He then opened another gate, and they all followed him into the streets of the Emerald City. So once he opened the gate, they all went in. <gasps> I can't wait tomorrow to read the next chapter. Oz the Great and Terrible. What do you think's going to happen, boys and girls? Everyone's got their glasses on. Do you ever wear glasses? When do you wear glasses? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Say, I know you like to wear them when it's sunny out. Yeah, and that's a good thing to do. It can protect your eyes. So today, maybe you can draw a picture of you wearing spectacles you wearing glasses and the glasses will protect your eyes or you might want to draw a picture of of a raft if you make a raft that you can use to float on to go down a river i just taped together some pieces of wood from a game that i had but you might have popsicle sticks or you can just draw a picture so i'd love to see a picture of the wizard of oz maybe dorothy Maybe a picture of her little basket where she's holding, holding her little Toto dog. Or the cowardly lion. Or what about the scarecrow? Could you draw him up on the pole when he was stuck in the mud in the river? You have so many choices. I can't wait to see what you draw. And please share them with me. I'd love to see them. Okay, tell mom and dad, text them to Mimi or email them to me, and I want to show them on YouTube. Wouldn't that be fun to have your drawings held up? I know you're a very good artist. No, I saw a picture that you drew today, and you are very artistic. So Mimi loves to draw, do you? Well, I hope you enjoyed the story, and it was fun reading to you. Have a great day. Bye. Love, Mimi.